Okay, so, with a bang. Um, so, assignment number 14, I've created a new uh, project in my workspace, and I'm going to start by creating three classes in this project, one for fireworks, one for particle, and one for projectile. So, file, new class, um, fireworks, that's going to be my top level class. File, new, and I can do an alt shift in. I think I'm going to do that one, new class. And this time, um, particle. And alt shift in, and down arrow, hit class. And this one's going to be projectile. Now fireworks is going to be my top level class. And we're going to do a lot of the normal same things that we've done uh, in the past. Extends JFrame. And of course if we extend JFrame, we need to import JFrame. And once we import JFrame to get rid of the wor uh, warning, we add default serial version ID, and I like to just get rid of that comment. And we're going to add a main method, so I can type in main, hold down control, hit tap space, and then tap enter. Inside of main, I want to create a uh, fireworks object. I'll call it F, new fireworks. And then I want to just do some basic setups here. I want to say f.setSize. And I want to make this um, 800 by 600. I'm going to do something a little bit different. Instead of hard coding these numbers right into the set size, this is called magic numbers. If you've got numbers in the middle of your code, and, you know, a person looking at your code says, hmm, where did those numbers come from? I don't know. It's magic. It makes it really hard to edit the code later. And so you can make your life a lot easier if you eliminate those. I'm going to create a public static final int. I'm going to hold down caps lock or tap caps lock and hit width equals 800. Okay. Um, whoops, I got to spell final right. And a public static final height equals 800. Or equals 600. Okay? And now throughout my code, I can just use width and height. And then when people look at it, they know exactly what it is. So width and height. Okay, so I'm setting the size of my, my JFrame. And, and, whoops, I gotta spell things right. And then I wanna make it so that they can't resize it. It just makes my life easier. F, whoops, cast off. F dot set resizable to false. And then what else? I wanna say F dot dot set default close operation to jframe dot exit on close okay so that when they click the little x button in the upper corner of this window and close the window it'll clean itself up nicely and then f dot set visible to true. And, and everything up until this point is going to be pretty much similar to all of our apps as long as we're setting the resizable. I mean, some applications need to be resizable. This is just a, a simple little game thing. And I kind of feel like it's not worth all the effort to make it resizable. So I'm just going to set resizable to false and then create some um, static final variables width and height that, that indicate its size. All right, so 
in my fireworks thing, um, what am I going to need? This thing is not going to have any special buttons and widgets. So I'm going to, I'm not, I'm not going to add items like buttons and widgets and, and, and a panel to draw in like the, the It's Amazing assignment. Instead, I'm just going to add a paint method, public void paint graphics G like we did in the faces and random faces and if I'm using graphics I got to uh, import graphics so we're gonna have a paint method and we're also gonna need a constructor so I'm gonna say public fireworks and inside of this constructor will initialize all of our instance variables now the first thing I would like to do is to make it so that you can just click and drag out a little line and it'll draw that line whenever you're gonna be be capturing mouse events like that you need some kind of a mouse listener now I could make one of these other classes a mouse listener and add those as the mouse listener for this application but that doesn't make a lot of sense for this particular application sometimes it makes sense but for this particular one I'm just gonna go ahead and make the fireworks application itself a mouse listener and also mouse motion listener so um, I'm gonna say implements mouse listener okay and if I implement the mouse listener interface I've got to first import it and then after I import it I've got to add the unimplemented method so if I just hover my mouse over the the underlying fireworks it's saying hey look that interface requires that you add certain methods and you haven't added them yet so so go ahead and I'll let it add the unimplemented methods for me and we can't see except that it has now added these mouse click, mouse press, mouse release, mouse insert, and mouse exited. These are the methods that will be called when those events happen. Okay. All I've done now is said that JFrame, because it implements mouse listener, it is able to handle the events, but I haven't registered any mouse listeners for my JFrame yet. Okay, so Fireworks implements mouse listener, and it is also a JFrame. I'm just going to say add mouse listener this and so <coughs> mm, it doesn't like that why not oops I because I didn't spell it right add mouse listener okay what that does is it registers this 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 fireworks app registers itself as its own mouse listener okay so I'm just gonna put some some print statements so that we can see what's going on here and then run it so um, it's, it's not going to do a whole lot of interesting stuff but I'm just going to say SYSOUT and then control space bar and then mouse clicked I'm going to copy paste that line to each one of these and change it here to pressed here to released here to entered here to exited and that's it so these are the different um, events that we can capture mouse entered mouse exited mouse released and mouse pressed and I've just added these little print statements so that I can see that I'm actually capturing and, and handling those events like I think that I should be so if I if I try to run this thing right now it's just a little bit of basic framework that, it, that is common for a lot of games um, do, do, do. So now if I if I click, oh, I had a lot of stuff happening. All right. So whenever my mouse rolls over, boom, it, I get a mouse entered event. When it rolls out, I get a mouse exited event. When I mouse press, 
I just press my mouse button down and then if I uh, move it around a little bit and then release it, I get a mouse released. If I press and release without moving my mouse, that's when I get the mouse clicked event. So, so it's nice to know exactly when each event happens. Um, so essentially what I'd like to do is I would like to click and drag and release and have it to just draw a line from the place that I pressed to the pl place, place that I released. This mouse event thing holds the information about that particular event, exactly where that event took place, the x and y coordinates of the mouse at the moment that it took place. Okay, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to store those. So I'm going to store mouse event pressed. And I'd also like to store a mouse event released. Okay, and then in mouse pressed, I'm just going to set pressed equal to E. And in mouse released, I'm going to just set released equal to E. In paint, I'm, I'm going to draw a black background because I like a black background, so I'm going to say g.setColor, color black, and then g.fillRectangle, 0, 0, and then I have this width thing that I defined. I know this is the width that I defined, so I can just select it and then select the height that I defined. Um, oh, I accidentally did a fill 3D rect. I don't want to do that. I'm just going to do a fill rect. That, that'll clear the background. Um, it's asking me to import color, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, import color. And if I run it again, I should see that I get a black background. Okay, but still nothing happened. It's printing out this stuff. Um, it's not m printing pressed and released because I took those print statements out. I want it to, the moment I release, to draw a line from where I pressed to where I released, okay? So what am I going to do? I'm going to say... G dot draw line pressed dot get x pressed dot get y released dot get x and released dot get y. Now this is going to create some problems for me, and, but I'm, I just want you to see the problem and then understand what it is and, and, and how to fix it before I add all that code and you type a bunch of stuff that you don't understand. So, so let's, um, let's just go ahead and run this and it should draw a line from where I pressed to where I released. Um, sort of, except that it crashes immediately. I see all these errors in my output. Well, let's click I'll drag and I release. Um, nothing's happening. All right. It is actually drawing the line, believe it or not, except that it's not repainting it on the screen. Paint got called exactly once when the thing first appeared. We want to force it to repaint. Um, if I if I click and drag and release and then move my window around, does that help? No, I can't resize it, so that doesn't help. If I, inside of released, and this is just a, a little temporary bit of code, type in repaint. That forces it to, to repaint the screen when I release. So now if I run it, I'm still going to get my crash. And now if I cl click, press, and release, hmm, nope, still not, hmm, why not? I was expecting it to.
Let's fix the crash and then see if that fixes our problem. What's happening? When this thing first opens, it calls paint. And I've got a pressed variable and a released variable, but I haven't actually assigned anything to them yet. And then I'm trying to draw a line. So let's let's do a little uh, something else. I'm going to create a flag. I'm going to say I'm going to make these private and have a private boolean and I'm gonna say ah mouse crest we're gonna change some of this a little bit later um, I'm going to start out in the constructor with mouse pressed equals false. So the first time it calls paint, oh, all right, so I want to say if mouse pressed is true, then draw the line. So the first time it it calls paint, it'll clear the background and it's going to see that mouse is pressed as false and it won't draw the line. Well that's good because I haven't pressed yet and I don't have anything assigned to the pressed variable. Now, now the moment I press it's not going to draw. It's not going to draw until I release and then I'll have both a, a pressed and release set. Um, except mouse pressed I'm going to say in that mouse to pressed method I'm going to set mouse pressed equals true. Okay? Hopefully this time it'll, it won't crash. Okay, well I didn't get my error message, but it's not painting. It's not drawing the line. I know why. It is drawing the line. But I set my color to black, and so I'm drawing a black line on a black background. I can't see it. I'm going to add inside this if statement g dot set color color dot white. Now let's try it again. Hopefully, click, drag, release. Hey, I got my white line. Now if I click, drag, and release again, I get another white line. Now that's not exactly what the effect that I want. I want it to draw the line as I'm dragging my mouse around and for the line to disappear when I release. Okay, so we've got this press and release event and, and we really do need to capture those. I, I, I really don't care about mouse clicked, mouse entered, and mouse exited. So I'm just going to delete those comments or the, the print statements that are inside of those. And I'm going to click the little minus sign and fold those up because it's really just kind of a lot of gobbledygook that I don't want to look at. Those, I had to put some sort of implementation for those methods um, because I'm implementing the interface and the interface requires it. So I've got them, but all I've got there is stubs because um, I really don't even though I've got to have an implementation, there's nothing in particular I want to do when those events occur. So I just leave the empty stud and stub and nothing happens. But I really did care about the mouse pressed and mouse released. So now there's, I'd like to cr capture an event for mouse moved. So what I want, would like to do is I'd like to put a comma and implement another interface called mouse motion listener. And of course I have to import mouse motion listener and then I have to add the unimplemented methods and I'll see that I now have stubs for two more methods mouse dragged and mouse moved and it's really the mouse dragged event that I'm worried about so I'm just going to delete this uh, to do thing because I really I'm not going to do anything for mouse moved but mouse dragged what I'd like to do 
I'm gonna change... No, I'm not gonna change that. I'm gonna get rid of... Um, these... for now. I'm actually gonna copy those and paste them into where it says mouse dragged, okay? So, now this variable is... Um, is, is poorly named now because it's not released but we'll worry about that later. Mouse released, I'm gonna set pressed equal to false. So it stops drawing, oops, mouse pressed to false. So it should stop drawing the line as soon as I release the mouse. So the idea is as soon as I press the mouse it'll start drawing the line and as I'm dragging, it resets the released location and repaints. So I'm going to hit play. Oops, I've still got an error. I need a semicolon. Not exactly what I was expecting. Why not? Well, I implemented the methods, and so my J-frame is a mouse motion listener, but I never registered it to listen to the mouse motion events. So I've added mouse listener. I need to also add mouse motion listener. This. So now if I run it, hopefully, I click, I drag, and hey, I got my little rubber band line. And that's a little bit useful input. Now, it doesn't disappear. Hmm, why not? Because I don't repaint on released. Now, eventually, we're going to get rid of these repaints. But for now, just to make things look a little bit better, and we're going to put the repaint somewhere else, essentially. Um, but for now, I'm going to put the repaint under mouse released. We had it there, I just took it out. Um, I can click, I drag, and release. Now eventually we'll have it so it creates a projectile, and that projectile will fire out and then explode. But for now, this is a good, starting a good stopping point. I'll uh, add the projectiles in the next video. All right, um, work hard. Uh, if you have any questions or problems, please let me know. Thanks.